thank you very much for your uh, invitation to this uh, talk. Sorry, I was uh, not able to communicate properly in between because I'm too busy these days. Uh, today, I, because uh, I understand that the audience is kind of a mixed audience, so half part of my talk would be a basic kind of historical background of uh, development of organic chemistry, drug development program. And later half, I will discuss something about work that we are doing at University of Delhi. So let me just uh, move to next slide. When we talk about organic chemistry, so it, it starts from the discovery of urea, and it was uh, synthesized by a chemist called Muller in 1823. You know, Muller was not a chemist actually. He was a, a medical student and he used to take subsidiary class of chemistry with Professor Gamelin and he realized the potential of Muller as a chemist and encouraged him to join the classes of John Virgilius, was a famous in order the chemist at that time, and who uh, gave the concept of retardants. What does it mean? It means, according to Virgilius at that time, organic compounds can be synthesized only in the living system, be it plant or animal. They cannot be synthesized. In the lab. So when we talk about this, so he, he actually, what happened during that time, he started working with Berzelius and accidentally he synthesized urea from ammonium cyanide. And he was 28 year old at that time. And he published his first paper in 1828. Now, if you look at urea synthesis, that what we call a first organic synthesis, that gave you the concept of isomerism, ammonium cyanate and urea as same molecular formula, but different structure, number one. Number two, we teach to the students about green chemistry. We talk about atom economy, but we never teach to our students that first organic reaction, that is the urea synthesis was itself 100% atom. So that was the first green reaction in the lab that was synthesized by any chemist. And when he did this, what I said in the previous slide, that Virgilius was very well-known chemist at that time. And his hypothesis was all the components cannot be synthesized. A PhD student who worked under Virgilius discredited this hypothesis of metallism. Now, at that time, because Virgilius was very famous chemist and Wohler was relatively younger and his almost the first paper he published at that time, people started questioning the hypothesis of metallism. So he discredited the theory of metallism proposed by his own supervisor. Later, this Vitalism hypothesis was completely discredited by the discovery of synthesis of acetic acid from carbon disulfide in 1845 by none other than Adolf Wohl. So when we talk about this, the synthesis, what was his first paper? This was the first paper of Wohler way back in 1828. And now we teach this to our students that Uller was the person who synthesized first of the lab. So how the publication works, and we all know that some of the younger uh, colleagues or the students who may be attending the uh, lecture, let me just show you the process of publication, how easy or how difficult it is. So as an author, publication means if you publish something, you will be the author of that. As an author, you first conceive an idea, what you want to do. The idea would be based on the literature incidents. 
for the literature, you will learn many things. Then you will propose an idea. This is what you want to do. When you propose the idea, you will do the experiment in the lab. So in the experiment in the lab, who does it? These are the students, the PhD student who comes in the lab and does the work. So once you have the experiment, then you will have results in your hand. Once you have results in your hand, you will compare the data and try to find out what's new in the experiment or what's done. Then you draw the conclusion. At that particular point of time, you start writing a paper, emphasizing what is the advantage of the work which you have conceived, which you have performed in your laboratory. So once paper writing is done, you submit the paper to whom? To the research journal. And that particular research journal will be handled by editor and associate editor. But their job is, their job is whether this meets the basic requirements or not, number one. Number two, whether the work is novel enough or not to be considered for publication. Once editor decides this, now what they do, they assign your paper for review. Generally, it is for three reviewers. So three reviewers assign independently of each other. All these three will review the paper, submit the comments to the editor. Now, at this particular point of time, editor will make a decision based on the comments of the reviewer. Number one, he get rejected. So once it gets rejected, it comes back to you with a rejection. What you do then, then try to think to re-modify your paper, sum it to some other journal, and the process starts again. If you are lucky, may be accepted, it may be accepted as such or with the revision based on the call. When you address all these issues, paper get accepted. Goes again to the editor. Now editor make a final decision, goes to publication. When it is published, and if it has a fundamental importance, it comes to the textbook and increases the I have been the associate editor of Nature Scientific Report and Royal Society Report. So you can understand if you want to publish a research paper the most powerful and important person is the editor. Editor decides the fate of the research paper, what is submitted to that particular journal. Let me tell you, there is no kind of appeal. If you appeal it also, most of the time, the fate remains the same. So your editor is everything for you. Now, having said that, our editors make correct decision always. That's the biggest question. We are also human beings. Some paper comes to me. I look at the paper, then read it, then decide whether this this particular paper is important, novel, all those parameters, and then make a decision. Let me just show you some of the editorial decision when the paper was rejected and people got to know what's going to say. Let me share some of those slides. Okay, let me just show first that what happens when your paper comes. This is how the paper comes. When paper comes, we read the paper, make a decision. Oh, it needs to be rejected. We don't need to do anything. Just you just write, reject without peer review, this is the message you will offer. And we send it, this is it. If you are lucky, it's accepted based on the recommendation of the, you know, or the reviewers, editors feels that, oh, your work is good, and it is accepted. Paper is accepted. Let me show you a few examples where editor made a huge mistake in deciding the fate of the particular review. Look at this. For me, seminal paper on weak interaction got rejected by nature. What was the comment? Comment was the work is too far from him. And 
for me got a Nobel Prize in 1938 at the age of 37. And scraps paper on citric acid cycle. Citric acid cycle. This paper got semi rejection from again from nature. Semi rejection means what? The paper was kind of accepted, but there was a backlog. Editor of nature wrote to Graham that though your paper is interesting, can publish it, but it will take long time. So I advise you, why don't you submit your paper somewhere else? And what Graham has written that he said after publishing more than 50 papers, I got rejection or same. The paper, The Role of Citric Acid in Intermediate Metabolism in Animal Tissue, went on to be published in the Dutch journal Enzymologia later that year. And 1953, Grab won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his discovery of citric acid. So it was the later of nature or Grab's paper. This was the original letter written by the editor, 14th June, 1937. Accepted, unpublished, suggestion published somewhere. Next, Gill and Mann's work on classifying the elementary particle 1983. The title of our paper, what these two authors wrote was very interesting actually. What they wrote, it is, Isotopic spin and curious particle. Unfortunately, editor of Physical Review did not like this curious particle and insisted upon you should revise the title of your paper as New Unstable Particle, which Galen then did not accept. Later, it was published somewhere else and they got a Nobel Prize in 19. 69. Hicks paper in 1964 wrote a second short paper known as Hicks model and was submitted to physics later, but it was rejected. Rejection note was it did not warrant rapid publication. It was published in physical reviews later on and got Nobel Prize in physics for the same work. Another interesting work was in animal spectroscopy in 1967. Richard Arms actually talked about FT NMR and tried to publish his paper in Journal of Chemical Physics. And that paper was rejected not once, but twice by the same journal. Later, he published the paper somewhere else, got Nobel Prize in Chemistry. So don't lose your heart if your paper gets rejected. Who knows? You have better news the years from now. So editor also makes a mistake. This is what just wanted to show you based on the literature. 